Hello, good evening and welcome back once again to In The Know, brought to you by The Racing Post and Coral. It's December, two weeks from Christmas, it's beginning to look a lot like Cheltenham and we've got day two of the December meeting to come on Saturday. And the feature race, of course, last year it was the Caspian Caviar, this year it's the Racing Post Gold Cup. Uh, you can buy a tin of the former for about 70 quid, but the information from the latter is absolutely priceless. And we'll be getting some fantastic insights and tips from uh, uh, some very informed tipsters uh, at, uh, uh, for that uh, opening race as well as some action from Doncaster, of course. We've got a, a juvenile hurdle that's thrown up Cheltenham winners, that's thrown up Aintree winners, even thrown up Royal Ascot winners over the past uh, few years. Uh, and much more besides, of course, uh, Albert Bartlett insights from those who know their potatoes and international hurdle chances for for uh, horses who might turn up at the champion hurdle but are unlikely to win it. So this could be their big day on Saturday at uh, Cheltenham. So stick with us. We're live on YouTube and Facebook for the next hour or so. My name is Ross Briley. I've got the chat box right in front of me. So if you want to get in touch, get involved. Let us know what you fancy on Saturday's racing uh, right now on that YouTube chat. And of course, please do like and subscribe. All hail the algorithm, of course. Uh, but uh, uh, let's see if we can get some winners then uh, ahead of the uh, the weekend. Uh, it's been a, a good Friday, uh, of course, at, uh, at Cheltenham, and uh, both our tipsters uh, have been banging in winners left, right, and centre, and both of them an absolute whisker away uh, from pretty much landing the uh, the whole pot as well. Uh, we we skipped last week, of course, here at, uh, at In the Know, but uh, the man to my left was in fantastic form then as well, uh, really gearing up for Christmas. A lot of trainers like to land those Christmas gambles. Well, I mean, the presents are on keels, aren't they? <laughs> it doesn't feel like Christmas in here, though, does it? It's baking in the no. studio, isn't it? Had to take me uh, Christmas jumper off, didn't I? Yeah, it's, oh, uh, yeah, it was a great one. It was, it the was best great Christmas work. jumper yeah, yeah. I've ever it seen. Was, it, was, it was dark navy blue, all one colour. Shows what a dull bloke I am outside of, uh, in the outside world. Yeah, you are colourblind, <laughs> as we know. But, <laughs> uh, but you've been in fantastic form. Uh, yeah, it's funny how it clicks, isn't it? It just suddenly yeah. goes like that. I mean, I've always been a bit of a streak tipster anyway. And, you know, there's losing streaks always last longer than the winning ones, but the winning ones are great when they come around. And, yeah, I banged in a few winners, uh, a few winners Saturday, a couple yesterday, another one today. Uh, Botox Haas would have made it a particularly good day, but just it never really looked like winning. I don't, I, I don't think, but I, you know, I got excited for a little while. Yeah, uh, and of course, out tipped by a certain Mr. Melrose anyway. Absolutely. Well, uh, like I said, it's normally uh, Tom Siegel on price wise duty, but um, he might well have lost his job, or he almost he became within a whisker of losing his job as Keith Melrose almost got the hat-trick up today. Uh, live from Santa's Grotto, it's Keith Melrose. Hello, Keith. Hello, Ross. How are you doing? I'm very well. Um, you'll be absolutely thrilled to know, Keith, that um, your third tip, Potter's Corner, was chinned on the line and, uh, and Graham Rodway uh, uh, was a, a very happy man. He was, he was, he was gutted you didn't get the, uh, the three up, but it did help his pocket. So he owes you a few quid, I think, Keith. His, his message to me was had absolutely the ring of a man who was cheating behind his computer. I knew he'd put up Diesel Daly as his nap of the day for race tipster today. So I knew he'd be chuffed with the result, even though he would uh, he'd feign sympathy with me. Yeah, and you're the, you're the two winners that, um, I mean, they'd won from about five out, hadn't they? Well, that's it. How many times at Cheltenham have you got what do you think from three out? You've had absolutely no moments of concern. Vienna Court just had to jump them from there, really. And Commodore had it on us. Commodore had it on the instant Santini came off the bridle, didn't he? There was a lot of bad rides in that race, I thought. Uh, he, got, he got a lot of rope, him and Santini, and he was just never going to stop as soon as Santini came off the bit and he cracked. That was it. Game over. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, and Potter's Corner, I mean... Pfft. Every every inch of that home straight, there was a lot in behind there who didn't want to go by. Unfortunately, Diesel Dallier did. Well, yeah, that was it. You know, you're looking and there's still five behind jumping two out, but he was finding and finding and finding. And it was just a case of, is anything going to go past here? And even after Diesel Dallier went past 50 yards from the line, Potter's just, he just had a go and he forced the photo, didn't he? But the photo was never promising. Yeah, he did. Uh, Potter's ran out of petrol and got done by Diesel on the line. But uh, Keith's in fantastic form. Paul will be throwing in some winners as well. Let's hope Saturday can continue in that uh, fine, uh, rich vein of tipping uh, form. But uh, David Stevens at home. Uh, David, uh, I know what these have been tipping. They've been very public. But uh, now's your chance. You could, you could tell us you've had all six winners, if you like. I could tell you that, Ross, but I'd be lying. But uh, Keith not only wins today's tipping, but he wins the Christmas decorations as well. It puts my little tree over my shoulder to shame and my fairy lights in the back there. Um, but yeah, look, I felt his pain when Potter's Corner just got chin, but some terrific tipping. So let's hope for the punter's sake that Keith and Kills can keep that good form going. 
you know, you've, uh, I never had you down for a, a Swedish minimalist vibe. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, look at the size of that tree. <laughs> yes, ready lit as well. Not that you can tell from here, but uh, I'm like Kiels. I've gone for my Christmas jumper. Just gone for a, a dark blue, the, uh, the Mrs. Sue Magna colours. Lovely stuff. Well, uh, uh, David, we've got, a, uh, we've got a great day ahead of us. Yeah, we really have, yeah. Um, I thought today was fantastic. I mean, just a mention for Kansas City Chief. I know he, he beat Kills his selection in that race, but Victoria Mal Malzard has become something of a Cheltenham specialist, the jersey rider. It was brilliant. And, and even the Diesel Dalio Potter's cross result. I mean, it was a terrific finish and, and a great story hearing the winning trainer afterwards on that one. So, yeah, a bit of everything today. And uh, looking forward to tomorrow. We talk about field sizes, but the big race, the Racing Gold Cup in particular, looks mighty competitive. The international hurdle, wide open, if maybe not a superstar in there. And then an interesting uh, juvenile hurdle at Doncaster that you already mentioned. Oh, well, hopefully, like I said, we can uh, get some insights as the evening goes on. Uh, hello to everyone who's watching at home. Uh, Tom Leach is involved, Kieran Katzen, Jordan M, uh, Genghis26. Uh, apparently there's 25 others out there. Thanks for getting in touch uh, and let us know what you fancy throughout the evening. And don't forget as well, the Christmas countdown continues here at uh, the Racing Post. You can win an absolutely cracking prize, the ultimate Cheltenham Festival experience for you and three friends. Uh, you get a hotel stay, you get uh, taken to the course in a helicopter, uh, and hopefully you know, back a few winners uh, as well. But either way, uh, you're already in the, uh, the winners' enclosure pretty much with that. All you need to do is place a bet on the Racing Post app on the below dates uh, and get involved. So uh, let's crack on and have a look ahead to Saturday's action. And normally the feature race uh, comes somewhere in the middle uh, of the, the programme, but we are getting on with it straight off the bat. Uh, the 150 at Cheltenham tomorrow is the Racing Post Gold Cup Handicap Chase. If there's one thing that Cheltenham do well, it is a very Interesting handicap chase, uh, and of course uh, this is the the second one uh, of the uh, the autumn. Uh, the winner uh, a couple of weeks ago, Midnight Shadow, does turn up, but it's the uh, the horse who finished third that day, Laylor, who heads the betting at nine to two. Silver Hallmark is six to one. Midnight Shadow sevens with Dostal Phil, who is also uh, in that Paddy Power Gold Cup. Of course, he's seven to one. Cool Cody was in there as well and came down at eights. Beakstown is eights. Fusel Raffles is eights. Faraday. Uh, for the uh, unbeatable Venetia Williams is 9-1, to one, and then it is bigger prices the rest. Uh, of course, two and a half miles uh, on the new course uh, here at, uh, at Cheltenham. And uh, Paul Keeley, we'll come to you first, because, uh, I mean, the new course, overfences, handicap chasers, you look at a field, you think 12, 13, 14 runners, uh, but inevitably, after a couple of furlongs, those who are in the van, Get on with it. Yeah, yeah it happens a lot like that all the time um, in, in these races, doesn't it? So you'd have to give you know all the horses that were up there last time another chance, wouldn't you? Call Cody. Um, you know he would have been first or second. You'd have thought, wouldn't he, last mm -hmm. time? And <coughs> pardon me, Midnight, Sh Midnight Shadow was 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 prominent all the way. Lawler wasn't far off it. Um, but I'm still, you know, I've still got this weak spot for a horse called Zanza. Oh. No, I knew it. And I knew it. When I looked at this race, I thought if Keels kicks off with Zanza, I can't help it. Like, you know what I mean? And I know, like, you know, you know. Hopefully, you know, one way or the other, I'll be cured after today. But, <laughs> but I mean, that run last time was, you know, ridiculous. I mean, he's a horse that finds trouble, makes trouble for himself as well as as, as well as gets a bit of bad luck. I mean, and and his jumping was so sticky early on. He's lost his position completely. And you, you know, I mean, you really wouldn't have. Uh, uh, wouldn't have blamed the jockey for giving up, but he ended up flying home and only got B five lengths, just over five lengths. Uh, it was a ridiculous one. I'm convinced he's still a really well handicapped horse if he ever puts it well together. You've got to remember, he was at this course last year that he was he was cantering in, uh, in behind um, Sky Pyre at three out, and he came down, um, uh, and that was over two mile. So I'm giving him one more shot because he's twelve to one. I will probably regret it. I've had a saver on Silver Hallmark. Okay. Uh, I just think that run behind Fiddle on the roof at Carlisle was really interesting. Uh, got, got it's worked out incredibly well. Well, it? he was beaten just over 10 lengths, but he was giving six pound to a horse officially three pound better than him, and is now officially a stone better than him mm -hmm. uh, after after the um, Bladbrook's Trophy second. And um, he was giving 12 pound to pay the piper who was second. Uh, and, and it was rated only five pound as inferior. And ran well behind Brave Man's Game next time. Um, so yeah, it's a good it, it's a good piece of form. He's a very lightly raced horse. I just worry about the likes of him uh, and uh, and Faraday or Farinet. I don't know uh, how, to, how you pronounce it. I don't really care. I worry that the ground they didn't get the rain that was forecast, mm. uh, and I just worry whether that'll be a bit quick for them. I mean, Faraday especially. He looked like he was being taken by up the straight at Sandown. Mm. Uh, 
last year, and then when they hit the ground, and it was when they hit the rising ground, the hill at Sandown, and and it took stamina in came into play. He really powered away, but I'm not, he's not going to get that because it's not going to be the ground isn't going to be that bad. So yeah, I'm giving one more chance to Zanza, but I would really fear Silver Home up. Okay, uh, Zanza then, who uh, personally is a. Uh, something I would only ever play in Scrabble uh, because oh, he's, I mean, he, to be fair, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm taking the mick out of you for Zanza, but Dostal Phil is my Zanza. <laughs> They're very similar touch, both well, same are, yard, yeah. both yeah. the same mistakes. Yeah, yeah. they make the, you know, there are horses that make their own trouble. And they, you know, they are going to do it one day. It's one of those as a punter, you think to yourself, am I going to miss the day that they put it together? Yeah. Right? And then you can't help it and you go back to it. But, you know, I do think Zanza is a well handicapped horse and hopefully one day he'll prove it. Okay, uh, Zanza then with the saver on Silver Hallmark for the Racing Post Gold Cup. Uh, Keith Melrose, uh, what did you make of this? Uh, have you got uh, Zanza fever as well? I wouldn't call it a fever. Maybe a little mild strain. He is my second horse in the race here. I thought the difference between him and Dostal Phil really was that uh, basically he did his staying on out of shot. You know, Dostal Phil was always in the picture. Zanza did exactly the same as him, apart from Tom O'Brien moved five seconds later. Part of the, he basically shadowed the Dostal Phil all the way from there, so I thought the price was, was too big and I think he'll run well again, but can see him getting a bit far behind and, and finishing well again. But he's such a big price, I thought I had to have him on. I'm with Farhane. I he was There's a little bit of loyalty here. He's been my horse to follow for the whole season. And I get what Keogh says. It might be softer ground. It might even be three miles that brings out the very, very best in his horse. But from the day I first saw him running for Venetia at Haydock, he thought, this is a 140 horse, no problem. Not at all, and uh, I'm going to be going again. He does tend to get ridden prominently, uh, which is going to help around here. We've already talked about how being in, on the sharp end in these races at Cheltenham is a massive advantage. So it's it's far enough for me, assuming they decide to run him, because he did get pulled out in the paddy power on good ground. Let's hope that rain comes. It's meant to come around the start of racing last I checked. And if it just happens to keep the ground good to soft, it should be soft enough for far enough, and I'm hoping he runs a big race. Okay, uh, a few angles for uh, for Farinay. Then uh, uh, Venetia Williams, of course, in fantastic form. She's won seven handicap chases in the past two weeks alone, of course, including that one at Cheltenham today and the Labrooks Trophy. Uh, and uh, Rachel Blackmore, first round for the yard, but also first uh, going for first uh, UK winner for a UK trainer, uh, although she's not had many, only seven rides. Uh, and Tamarin Blur is the only horse uh, to win this race in the past 20 years without a prep run. So uh, plenty of interest for, uh, for Farinay, of course. That could be incredibly well handicapped. Uh, but other horses to mention, uh, we're going to have to uh, throw a few more to, uh, to Keith, just quick words. I mean, the two that I'd probably end up back in uh, haven't even been mentioned yet. I know the winner of the Pandy Power Gold Cup coming for this race has a notoriously bad record, <coughs> not since Exotic <coughs> Dancer has it been done. But Midnight Shadow, I mean, we've not really seen this horse over fences very much. It's a grade two winning hurdler. The yard are in fantastic form. I know... You know, he's, uh, he was coming to the end of his tether a little bit when Protector Act was rattling home, but that form was bomb-proof. He was second in this race last year. I mean, he's going to be in the right position. He's in fantastic form. I can't see how he's not going to run his race. Yeah, he's going to run his race. It all depends on whether the, the rise and the weights has, has done for him. I mean, obviously, only Exotic Dancer, I think, is the last, well, Exotic Dancer is the last one to do the yeah. double, isn't he? So, so, you know, it's a hard double to pull off. Um, but, you know, I think he probably would have won, even if Cool Cody had stood up last time. You, 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 yeah, you can't... You know, if you're looking for a safe each way bet to get in the first five, I think you're, I think you're betting first five, aren't you, Dave? Uh, then he's probably one of them. Yeah. A lot, a lot of being said about that. But Cool Cody, obviously, I think you're right because I think he was beating Cool Cody anyway. But Cool, cool Cody seems to be five pounds better off this time, which I thought was, you know, and he's got so much more course form. The reason horses tend not to follow up is because they have their shot at the Paddy Power. He's had the seven pound Riseman Night Shadow, so he's a horse that he goes in your play spot, doesn't he? For yeah. definite. Even though they don't win a lot of them, place Paddy Power winners in this race. I mean, the thing for for, for him, uh, Midnight Shadow, is that uh, you look at it, you think, oh, he's had ten chase starts, but um, <laughs> it's only four in handicap company, and loads of those have been in graded races. Like I said, he's a he's a Grade Two winner here, uh, second to Itchy Feet, you know, running behind Sam Crow. The horses that beat him, uh, All Mankind, Itchy Feet, and Chatham Street Land, have all been, you know, they're, they're genuine Grade One, Grade Two performers. So. I think he's going to run a big race. The other one we have to talk about is, uh, is Fusel Raffles as well, of course, who uh, took full advantage of Chamblou's uh, uh, spill at uh, Weatherby. Um, three winners from 19 runners for the, the yard over the past 20 years. He's a funny one, Fusel Raffles, because he, he's, he's the only horse in this race, I think, that uh, he, you don't quite know how good he is. I mean, 
he's been running in small field races. He's been running in things that four or five run a novice chase kind of events. And he's going to go either way. I can see him either bolting up or pulling up. Yeah, I thought he sort of made up. I thought he's run a couple of moody races this season and not mm. looked particularly happy, but then sort of consented to run on late on, if you know what I mean. Um, yeah, I don't know much about you know how good he really is or how good he wants to be. Yeah, uh, he's not. Yeah, he's not one for me. I mean, he'd be one of the first off my list out of that, you know, head of the market. Yeah, he's just a funny. One. I mean, he's three, you know, Chantry, three lines behind Chantry House. If Chantry House, oh is yeah, he's, he's, got, he's got, you know, he's obviously got some serious form, but yeah. you know, I'm just a little bit worried about what's up there. Yeah, like I said, it's um, the engine's fantastic, but um, whether the uh, the steering wheel is uh, going to be pointed in the right direction. But uh, David Stevens, how many places have you got for us here? It's a it's a fascinating renewal of the racing post Gold Cup. We've uh, we've gone through quite a few. Uh, of our uh, fancies there for for Keels and Keith. Uh, what do you make of it? Yeah, only four places each way, Keels. We've got Christmas to pay for, so <laughs> take pity on us. Uh, I'm with you, Ross. I, Midnight Shadow, I think. I mean, look, I'd be disappointed if he's not in, in those four places each way, and I'm just wondering if the likes of Lawler are better off at the weights with him, but that might not stop him. I'm certainly hoping that's the case. And the other one I like is Silver Hallmark, just because of that fiddler on the roof form that, that Keels has already spoken about. Interesting, none of us. Really fancied a favourite Lawler. I thought he looked absolutely strip fit for the Paddy Power. It was one of those where Paul Nichols had clearly done everything at home to get him bang on. And I'm not sure there'd be an awful lot of improvements to come. It's just whether, I say that turnaround, the, the, the weights will help the favourite. But if you fancy Midnight Shadow or Farinet or indeed Sepage, uh, Sue Smith, Venetia Williams. They did have four runners. Sadly, joke dancers come out. But our first price boost of the night is one of the ladies to win this. Was five to two, now seven to two. So Farinet well backed. Midnight Shadow, of course, in there as the Paddy Power winner. And that form, I mean, Protector out, obviously running away with the race at Aintree last weekend. Looks absolutely rock solid, that Paddy Power form. So brilliant races. So I really, I mean, the fact, as I say, Fusel Raffles on his day, really classy horse. And, and as Kill said, he's the first one you put a line through. So uh, you could have 10 goes at this and it's an absolute cracker. Yeah, Venetia Williams or Sue Smith to train the winner of the race and seven or two out from five to two. Uh, like I said, 82 horses have run from the Paddy Power Gold Cup past 20 years and nine of them have won. But obviously only one of, the, one of those was a previous winner. And just a quick word on Layla, no winner older than eight in the past 20 years as well. And 76 have tried and only four have placed. I know Layla's a bit of a funny one because he had a big gap in his career, but... Still. Yeah, I mean, we should have given him a bit more credit for, you know, because he's been a very, very good horse and he did run really, really well. But it's an interesting point Dave made that, he, you know, he looked hard fit. Mm. Uh, so how much is he going to come off? He's, he's edged up the weights a few pounds, hasn't he? So, uh, you know, is he going to come on again? The one thing Paul Nichols has said, obviously, is that that was his first run off a of, off of wind up. He seemed to blow up and then get a second wind and run on again. Mm -hmm. Now that he knows he can run without any, any, any pain, he might not. You know, he might not hit that sort of flat spot that he hit last time. So we'll see. I mean, his price is as it is. I think he might end up being a point or so bigger. I don't think he's going to be one that the people plunge on. Uh, but it's a wide open race, as it looks. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, cracking renewal. Let's see what people at home are uh, are backing. Plenty of them. Venetia loves this meeting, says Tom Williams. Farinay going to bolt up, says uh, Off World. Um, Silver Hallmark for Jordan M. He says uh, still very likely race. Could be better uh, than this. Uh, and uh, Tom Williams says, didn't think Fusel Raffles would be running in many handicaps when we first saw him again. Uh, it's a, either a, a good point in the fact that he uh, could be a bit better or a bad point in that he hasn't quite filled that, uh, that potential. Uh, Sir Adelac each way after a nice prep run, that says Stephen Hughes. Uh, a midnight shadow for Dante 44. So everyone's got opinions here that shows how difficult this race looks on paper. Keels, what are you backing? Uh, I've backed Zanza and Silver Hallmark. Zanza and Silver Hallmark for Paul Keith. Yeah, it's Farinay with uh, Zanza as the as the backup. Okay, very well. And now we'll go with uh, two course horses, Midnight Shadow and Fusel Raffles against the field. And David? Uh, Midnight Shadow and Silver Hallmark. I think we need a couple in a race as, as tough as this. Lovely stuff. Uh, well, uh, best of luck, everyone. Um, uh, it feels strange, doesn't it? I feel like I should be right. That's the show over with. We've talked about the feature race. <laughs> Good night, everyone. But uh, we've still got plenty more to, uh, to get through. Uh, of course, it's not just uh, Cheltenham tomorrow. We uh, we do go to to Town Moor for some interesting races as uh, well. The 205 at Doncaster was going to be uh, a graded novices chase, but only three have turned up for that, so they swapped it round. This is much tougher. It's a, a handicap hurdle here over two miles uh, where San Gino, uh, or San Gino is the uh, the favourite at odds of 130. Take it easy is four to one. Tommy's Oscar nine to two. Dromino is six to one. Eight to one uh, is Lucky One. Nine to one Natural History and twelve to one. Are those here for this tough little contest? We will come to you 
uh, Keith, uh, first off for this, uh, this handicap hurdle. Uh, some fairly unexposed types, none more so uh, than the, the French recruits at the, uh, the top of the betting. He brings a lot of promise. There's a few here who have been up against each other and bring rock-solid handicap hurdle form. What caught your eye in this race? I had it down to uh, Sonangino and, and Tommy's Oscar more than anything. And what sort of swung it a little bit was uh, was Tommy's Oscar. He did win at Haydock, obviously, extremely impressively. But there was a headwind, actually. I was stood right on the rail and I felt it. So um, I, I was conscious that that would be uh, elongated the, the undoubtedly impressive manner of his victory. Sonangino running that card as well. He ran behind Barrichello. And it had the look, didn't it, of a, a first run uh, just to get the, get the cobwebs off and and get him going again. I went back and watched some of his French runs. He actually was quite, uh, quite taking in those. He used to get prominent rides. When he won at Otoy, he was basically bounced out in the front and needed a little bit of time to get unfurling, which you'd maybe assume Brian Frost will do tomorrow. She might just start winding him up a little bit earlier than, than Harry Cobden did at Haydock. Uh, another thing I noticed about Son and Gino was his, his hurdles mark. Now, in France, he had a mark that equated to a British mark of 141. And a lot of the time, more with older horses, the British handicapper just gives them the French rating when they come over here. But with Son and Gino, he's taken a bit of a chance. He's put him £13 lower. Now, I can understand the French handicapper maybe gets a little bit excited with these uh, promising four-year-olds, but that's quite a bit of a quite a bit of a chance to be taking. And he'd be interesting enough on the bare form of Hedox, let alone what he's got to come. I just thought he was the one that was he was easily the standout, sort of most interesting in this race. Wouldn't be at all surprised if he was running a 140 plus by the end of the season for Nichols. I thought he was absolutely worthy of where he is in the market now. Uh, just, I mean, talking about handicap marks though, uh, the horse who finished second to him uh, in France, uh, Monte Igueldo, is now trained by Oliver Greenhall. They give him a rating of 112. Sonny Gino beat him uh, a length and a quarter, giving him a few pounds. He's rated 128. I know it's with French form, it's difficult to work yeah, out. Yeah, it's hard. I mean, I, th I think for the last couple of years at least, uh, um, the handicapper has given them basically their French mark, like Keith said, and some of them uh, have run absolutely appallingly mm -hmm. and look nowhere near worth it. Like, you know, and I think the fact that they've got such a big programme for three and four year olds over there that you know they can uh, they can be a little bit overrated. So we'll have to wait and see. I mean, he's, he's still a promising horse, ran a promising race last time. I prefer the chances of Tommy's Oscar, not strongly. I, I mean, I, I backed him last time at Haydock. Uh, he's just a horse I really, really like, and I think he, what he wants is a flat track like he got at Haydock. Uh, he didn't seem to get home behind Bass Rock uh, the time before on, on a stiff two and a half at Carlisle. But it's this still is, not bad form, is it? No, it's not, it's not bad form, but he was beaten a fair way. Yeah. Like, you know, and having swung into the into the straight, like looking like it was going as well as anything, and been been a well back favourite as well. So yeah, I think he, uh, I think he, the drop back into two mile will be absolutely fine for him. Um, I don't know about the ground if it dries out too much. Like you know, he's got winning form and everything, but it, you know now he's going down to two mile. He might want to test it. There is rain forecast, and this is this you know is important for the last couple of races on the card. Uh, it's supposed to rain pretty heavily from about 2 p.m. onwards because you know the ground was soft on Monday. It's dried all the way out to good as soft. The going sticks suggest it was heading towards good, even if the times didn't necessarily suggest that today. So, so uh, it all depends on uh, on what it rides early and when the rain arrives. But um, for me, I just prefer Tommy's Oscar because I see where Keith comes from, uh, and you know the fly, the big fly in the ointment is natural history if he ever puts mm. it in. Like, you know what I mean? Because, you know, he won so easy the time he got it right, went off favourite for the Imperial Cup afterwards. His mark in relation to his flat form is ridiculously low. But he threw in such a moody run last time, yeah. didn't he? You just don't know what to make of it. Yeah, he's a proper uh, one extreme or the other kind of horse. Exactly, yeah. I mean, Lucky One's also like that, isn't he? I mean, when he, yeah. when he beat Natural he went, he went off insane pace out in front. They then lumped him up in grade and... I mean, obviously, in hindsight, beat, trying to beat my Jogo in the, the more battle was asking a lot. So you've got a couple of quirky types yeah, in there. Yeah. Um, I mean, the one that I think is the most solid that we haven't mentioned is, is Take It Easy, um, who, of course, has form with Tommy's Oscar. Beat Tommy's Oscar when getting £2, now getting £13. Yes, obviously, he's an awful, he's an awful lot um, better off. I mean, I think Tommy's Oscar, for me, is a horse that's been running himself fit as well. Mm -hmm. and, now, and now he obviously is. 
you know, because I think every run's been better than the previous one. Now, it, it still might not be good enough. You can understand why why people fancy take it easy on that form, but I think Tommy Josk is in a better place now than he was the uh, first time up. Yeah, and I, I, d I just I really do have a soft spot for Pam Sly as a trainer. Though. Oh, I do. Yeah, 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 definitely. She's fantastic. She really is. Uh, okay, uh, so uh, quite a few uh, 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 open thoughts here. Uh, Dromino's the other one we haven't mentioned up in grade, but uh, the Donald McCain Yard are in fantastic form. Uh, uh, somewhere between sort of 25 and 30 percent strike rate at the at the moment. Tom Leach says natural history is a, a yak. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't think we're disputing that, but he's just a talented one. <laughs> he is a talented one. Sometimes uh, yaks win. Uh, Tommy's Oscar was given 16 pounds to Bass Rock, which was a big ask, says Jordan M. Uh, and uh, Tom Leach says uh, Bryony Frost on a Saturday, easy pick for me. So again, plenty of opinions here. We'll reiterate the selections uh, in a second. But uh, uh, David Stevens, do you have any uh, uh, spanners to throw into the works? Yeah, I thought I was going to get first dibs at it, but you brought it up, take it easy. I mean, obviously beat Tommy's Oscar, now considerably better off at the weight. Was then second to one more for the road, who came out and beat a small but select field at Newbury. Uh, I think take it easy is a very, very, uh, going to say a confident selection here for me. So that should put everyone else off of that who's watching. Well, I mean, again, even even you can't put me off a of Pam Slimer, David. Oh, I'm, I'm with you in the Pam Sly camp. Ever since she trained Speciosha to win the Rockfell and followed by the Guineas the following season. She's a star and joking apart. I think it plays its part here. Sonny Gino, obviously trained by the champion mm -hmm. trainer, full of promise and could be a bit of a superstar. But I say, I think on what we've seen on the race course, I think Take It Easy and Tommy's Oscar have well, certainly achieved more over here. Uh, I do think the favourite's in there largely on you know who he's trained by. Yeah, absolutely. Sonagino then uh, 100 to 30 at the top of the betting. Uh, but Keith, you think there's a bit more substance than just who he's trained by. Uh, he's one of your two. Yes, yes. I, I, Sonagino is the is the one for me in this race. I mean, I, I, Tommy's Oscar is, I respect this chance, but Sonagino is just this horse. He, he's got the, the look of a horse that's going to come on loads for that first run. OK, uh, there we go. Keith's thoughts, Paul Keeley. Uh, yeah, just edging towards Tommy's Oscar, but far from a confident selection. OK, very well. And uh, I'll go for uh, for Take It Easy. And uh, David, uh, you're at home doing the same. I'm going to join you taking it easy. Absolutely. Lovely stuff. Well, uh, it is. It's December after all, isn't it? So uh, we should be hibernating. Uh, never mind anything else. But uh, Sonagino, 130 favourite for that handicap hurdle at Doncaster, the 2.05. Uh, back down to Cheltenham we go then for the, the 2.25 up next. It's the uh, Albert Bartlett Novices Hurdle. Uh, uh, of course, uh, a, a trial for the Albert Bartlett Novices Hurdle. Uh, Blazing Carl is 11 to 10 favourites uh, for tomorrow's Sue 25. Uh, Jolino Bello is 7 to 4. Barony Legends uh, 6 to 1. Current Mood 16 to 1. 20 uh, to 1 is Bally Griffin Cottage and Lock Derg Rocco. Uh, and it's a small field uh, here uh, for a, uh, a bit of a disappointing lineup, I think. Uh, uh, albeit I was hoping for a few more different form lines to throw in because Blazing Carl, of course, and Jolino Bello have already uh, met uh, here at the, uh, the track last time out in the Hyde, which is a very good. Uh, angle for this uh, race. Uh, Blazing Carl beat Jolino uh, Bello on that occasion. Uh, Paul, is there any reason why that form could get turned? Yeah, another three furlongs, five pound turnaround in the weights. I think both of those are valid. Um, I think Jolino Bello, I think he got a bit outpaced more than more than outstayed at the end of that race okay. last time. And you know, I think he shapes like an out and out stayer, and he is getting the extra weight. If I was, you know, if you were telling me I had to have a bet in the race, I think at the prices I just about back him I don't, again it's this is not what you would call a punter friendly race is it no, no you know uh, uh you know the unknown one, unknown one i suppose is barony legends who's just done everything pretty easily at the, uh, and and it, obviously another one stepping up the trip could be a danger on rprs he isn't very far off at all uh, we just don't really know how much that form is worth um you know i don't think it's a race we need to dwell on too much Jolino bellow for me just Okay, Jolino Bella then is a uh, seven to four shot uh, here. Talking about Barony Legends, I mean the one, the big plus for Barony Legends is the uh, is the yard at the moment. They are uh, knocking in winners left, right, and centre. They're twelve from forty, uh, but if you ignore uh, the uh, the chasers and the uh, the bumpers and the flat horses, they're twelve from twenty nine over hurdles. So uh, all those winners have come over the, uh, the smaller obstacles. Barony Legends won by the the best part of twenty seven lengths at Linkfield. Always difficult, Keith, with these wide margin winners though, because um, especially in bad ground. At, uh, at Lingfield on a Sunday. Um, you know, Barry Legend's very different proposition here, but has clearly got uh, some ability. He did that entirely on the bridle, that, didn't he, when he won yeah. at Lingfield? Uh, it was um, just cruise clear. I mean, the third, the horse finished second to him in the end, is got some bump, placed in bumpers and placed in points. And 
you know, so there was something there to, to get your teeth into a little bit. And when this horse, Barney Legends, finished second in a point, it was to Donny Boy, who's won two runs for Nick Alexander now, looking like one of the most exciting horses Alexander might have ever had. So there's a, there's a little bit of substance there. The Dan Monty sister was a half-sister of Vic Venturi. So you've got a lot of hope for this going up and trip. I thought there was enough there with the effortlessness of that win at Lingfield. I thought there was enough there to have a go at 15-2, but it wasn't a massively strong selection. I just saw enough. We get what happens is with, from that hide, a lot of people just assume that's going to work out again and be the crucial bit of form for this race. But there was enough in what Barney Legends' background and that run at Lingfield for me just to see he's worth a little go at 15-2. to two. Okay, Barney Legends then is a 6-1 to one shot. I mean, uh, it has thrown up plenty of winners. Up seven winners from 17 runners. Uh, have come from the uh, the high to to, uh, to this contest. Um, personally, I mean, I, I don't I don't want to tip an eleven to ten shot. I don't really necessarily want to back an eleven to ten shot. <laughs> but coming up to the final hurdle, I think Bla- Blazing Carl. He still looked a bit. He looked a bit green. He still looked like he was learning the job. Um, I got the feeling that the, there's. I mean, there's definitely more to come from him. He's he's unbeaten over hurdles. We don't quite know how good he is. Obviously, he's got that extra distance to go. Yeah, I mean, it's one of those. There's more to come from. You should hope there's more to come from at least the front three in a bit, and wouldn't you? Yeah. There may be more to come from the others too. So. Uh, it's you know you take your choice. I slightly favour Jolino Bello, but I don't think it's a race I'm going to play in. No, no. And do you think it'll have an impact uh, come the uh, the spring? <sighs> I don't know. I mean, you'd like to see you know if it, you know if they if they are well, but horses, you'd like to see them and get plenty of practice in, wouldn't you? Yeah. yeah. And see where you stand with them. But um, they still obviously yeah. are Irish raiders. To yeah. Go. I mean, it's not a, you know I'm, I'm not thinking well one of them is an Irish yes, raider. Yes, true. Yeah. Uh, but I'm not thinking. Oh, I must look out at this for the for the Albert Bartlett at the moment. Okay. So tentatively. Chilino Bello, tentatively. Chilino Bello, then, for Keels. Uh, Keith? Yeah, it's uh, tentatively a little bit here, but Barony Legends, he's a promising one. Okay. Uh, and, uh, David, unless you uh, fancy offering us three places for this race... Um... <laughs> <laughs> Just shut up and don't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't what I was going to say. Uh, uh, I'll just hand it over to you, David, because that's... I mean, yeah. Reply to that as you will. I... I see Christmas has made you even happier, Kills. <laughs> um, it, I mean, interesting market on this this afternoon. They were 11 to 8 joint favourites earlier on. And, and as you can see, they've gone one way. And that's for the Irish runner here. Now 11 to 10, 7 to 4, Jolino Bello. I mean, I am actually with Kills on this. At 7 to 4, do that's I want to find out? That's why they've gone the other way. If a five pound pull is enough. <laughs> no, I was going to say, I'm with you. And I don't really see it as a betting race. But we do have another enhanced special on this race. And if you think the big two will fight it out again, as they did last time. The reverse exactor was even money, now six to four. So that may be the play here. Um, but yeah, I, it's, it's, it's difficult to have a strong view on this, given we don't know the form of Barony Legends. Leg- uh, Lingfield win could be something special. Will Blazing Cal uh, Frank, uh, hold on to that form over, over the Paul Nichols runner? Charles Burns has said he thinks he's the best festival chance he's got this year. So it could be a tip in itself, but one to watch for me. Yeah, although I can't help but feel that if Charles Burns has another festival hope, he ain't telling us. <laughs> <laughs> He's certainly not no, telling no, the bookies, no. that's for sure. So, uh, uh, Blazing Cal then, 11 of 10 for the Albert Bartlett Novices Hurdle, of course, uh, uh, this race won by, you know what I mean, Harry a few years ago before going on to uh, to, to win in the spring. Uh, as for uh, for people at uh, home, Bally Griffin Cottage, uh, he just wins, says Alan Keane. At, uh, at 20 to 1. Uh, well, that's the most confident selection we've had. I might have to have a 10 on that instead. <laughs> yeah, I've got to say, Alan, I don't know what you know, but um, fair enough. Worth a, worth a saver, I think. Uh, so uh, there you go. And don't forget that price boost. Blazing Cal and Galeno Bello to finish first and second. 6 to 4, out from even money. Just the six runners there for that, uh, that Cheltenham contest then at 2.25. May well throw up some uh, some spring winners. Uh, but uh, the, the Summit Juvenile Hurdle over at Doncaster... Uh, much more likely to throw up some winners. I think quite a few Grade One winners uh, have come out of this over the past few years, and we've got on paper looks like quite a nice lineup uh, this season. Uh, with Porticello at seven of four, uh, top of the betting here for uh, Gary Moore. Magistrato at threes, Knight Salute at five to one, two friendly at sixes, eight to one, Impulsive one, eleven to one, Sacre Pierre, and twenty eight to one bar those. Like I said, we've had some uh, half decent winners of this over the past uh, few years. Mon Morale, of course, last year. Kel Destine. Uh, we have a dream. Uh, and uh, even, like I said, 2015, who dares wins? Uh, so uh, maybe keep an eye on whoever wins this and back it at Royal Ascot in a few seasons' time. But, uh, Keith, you're no- normally um, handicapping uh, chasers. Uh, how do you fare on the juvenile hurdle form? 
it's not my strongest uh, remit, but I do quite like checking out and trying to parse the French stuff because I don't think it's something a lot of people do. Uh, I do try because you can get the the replays on France Gallo for for nothing if you sign up. So I, I do try and pour through that, and I actually watched the race that Porticello and Magistrato ran against each other at a toy in April there, and I just couldn't see a way that Magistrato actually reversed that form because the horse quite comfortably he got the rail and Porticello still came over the top of him and, and, and got him so can't see him reversing that form what was interesting about it is that the horse that finished third to them that day in Pranabla he went on to win a listed race finished second at a grade, in a grade two and he went on to finish fourth in the pre Cambaceres, which is one of France's biggest three-year-old hurdle races um, so the, the form of that does actually look pretty good um, so with that considered you know, I just I thought those were really two very promising horses Porticello made a promising enough Reappearing uh, British debut to win the, the Wednesday deal that often isn't much of a race and an RPR of 109 on the winner tells you it's not this year either but um, he's going to come on for that definitely he's going to get a nice long straight up at Donny to, to run down and I think he'll probably just just prove himself a, a pretty handy juvenile without being a superstar which you know we have had good horses in this race but it's not always the case but you do need to be useful to win it I think that's what he is Okay, uh, is a seven to four shot uh, here at uh, Doncaster, of course. Uh, uh, last season's uh, triumph at Hurdle uh, should have, well, would have been won by uh, Goshen, and Gary Moore might have a, a horse with a, uh, an equal chance uh, to to go there as favourite again. Uh, those uh, two French Raiders uh, or French imports uh, are up against uh, Milton Harris and Paddy Brennan with uh, with Knights of Lute, who surely. Um, I mean, on form, is the uh, the best horse in this race? Yeah, you can argue that. I don't think any of the juvenile form we've seen so far is remotely uh, special or even that good. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, a night salute beat um, Saint Vicier at Cheltenham. Uh, got thrashed seven lengths by Greystone at Warwick. We've been thrashed six lengths by by in this world. Uh, first time up for, for Dan Skelton. So I think we're talking about horses that are a long way down the pecking order in Britain for, mm -hmm. for proposal drive hurdle horses. Um, this race would also be far more uh, competitive if there wasn't also a triumph hurdle trial at Cheltenham. I don't think that's the best plan in the world, but there you go. Uh, I, come, I came down on the side of the jolly in the end as well, just because he must have some sort of engine to land almost back feet first, the first four hurdles at Weatherby. He jumped absolutely appallingly, and I don't think many horses can do that and still win. But when they actually really started racing in the straight, he picked up and, and pinged them. Uh, so he obviously can jump. Uh, I think this stiffer test of stamina will suit him at Donny as well. Uh, so it's just him for me. Uh, again, it's, you know, I, I, I think several of the TV races aren't particularly punt friendly. Uh, not for someone like me who likes to look for a bigger price. Uh, anyway, uh, but I think Porto Chano is, is very much the one to beat. OK, Porto Chano is a 7-4 to four shot. I kind of disagree with you in not being punter friendly because eight runners and a horse I fancy at 5-1. to one. I mean, that's good in all my each ways uh, with, uh, with Night Salute and uh, just hoping it at very least sneaks into the frame. Uh, Night Salute did us a, uh, a favour, David, uh, at, uh, at Cheltenham last month. And um, after reading Milton Harris's interview in the Racing Post a few weeks ago as well, I mean, I'm partly with the form, partly with the horse, partly with the speed figures, but uh, I kind of want Milton Harris to, uh, to put it up to him as well. Just got the Milton Harris interview was extraordinary. Did he say he dated Belinda Carlisle? So... For men of a certain age like myself, that's quite something, dating <laughs> Linda Carlisle. Anyway, uh, back to the horse. Yes, this Knight Salute is a rare horse. He was a beast that we all agreed on a few weeks ago, wasn't he, when he won at Cheltenham. He did the business that day, and for that reason alone, I can't desert him. I thought maybe too friendly, the Scouton runners. Won two little races, now stepping up in class here, but the form Dan's are in. I thought too friendly. Again, you two had each way three places, so they'd be a couple for me against the favourite. Okay, Porticello is that favourite at seven of four. I said I'll, I'll stick with Knight Salute. Uh, just a quick word on other ones. Um, we've got Khaleesi. The only in potential uh, fly in the ointment here is the, the David Pipe uh, runner. And I mean, he, he was no back number on the flat. He was a mid 80s horse for William Haggis. Yeah, he was. Yeah, I mean, it's a big ask. And you'd imagine coming from a yard like Pipes, he's not going to be sitting there at 20 oaks for very long if, <laughs> if he's, uh, you know, if he turns out to be very good. So, I mean, it's very much a, a watch the market for that. Yeah, I'm trying to think, uh, in fact, I, I don't need to think, I've got a computer right in front of me, but uh, I wonder what the price Adagio was for his hurdles debut mm. last year. Mm. Um, yeah, probably probably a fair bit shorter. He was 15 to 8, so yeah, yeah fair yeah. enough. Uh, so maybe that 28 uh, is uh, a message in itself. Uh, but uh, Keith, uh, what wins the Summit Juvenile Hurdle? Yeah, Porticello for me, I think he, I get what Keels is saying, I don't think we've probably seen the Triumph Hurdle owner yet, but if there's, if there's a sort of 135, 140 juvenile here, it might well be him. 
Okay, very well. And Keels? Yeah, same, Porticello. Uh, I just think long straight will suit. Okay, uh, and I will, I will go with Knight Salute. Like I said, I'll be sticking him in those filthy each way doubles and trebles, just the kind of bets you like, David. And I'll be joining you on that same filthy uh, sort of each way bet. Sounds good. Uh, people at, uh, at home, uh, Magistrato getting weight, the, uh, the one for me. Uh, and Nichols won this a few times and uh, has uh, targeted with his, his better ones. Uh, and uh, Nijinsky's on Porticello uh, for the Triumph at 33 to 1. Uh, so he wants him to win well tomorrow. Of course, uh, if he does win well tomorrow, uh, he certainly won't be that price. So um, uh, good luck in the Summit Juvenile Hurdle tomorrow. And uh, fingers crossed for some of those tentative Triumph Hurdle anti-post slips as we go back from Doncaster once more to Cheltenham for the uh, international uh, hurdle here with uh, not a particularly international feel, not really a, a top-class feel either. Uh, genuine Grade 2 animals here. Obviously, we've seen some uh, uh, multiple winners of this race in the past as well. The likes of Rel Keel and the new one have taken this plenty of times and Song for Someone is bidding to win it again after uh, scraping home by the skin of his teeth last season. He's a 9-4 to four shot here. Joint favourite with So Royal, also at 9-4. to four. Guard your dreams for the Twist and Davis team is 11-2. Bally Adams, 6-1. to one. Heaven Help us, 11s. Wild Bad Oscar is 12-1. to one. Hunter's Call at 14-1. to one. I mean, you were talking about uh, non-punter friendly shapes to, uh, to race as uh, Keels. A 7-runner uh, grade 2 hurdle here. Yeah, 7-runner grade 2, 9-4 each of 2. You can make some sort of case for, uh, for a lot of them, really. Um, I backed so well earlier in the week. I thought it was a big price for 7-2, to but uh, I wasn't really thinking about the extra yardage. I think he's a proper 2-miler who doesn't want to go much further than 2 miles. Uh, and this is two mile, one furlong, and another 95 yards uh, longer than advertised because of round movements or whatever. And I just wonder, because Song for Someone isn't going to make this a crawl. The Song for Someone Song for Someone's a horse that needs further, so he's going to make it a test. And he doesn't stop, does he? Song no, he doesn't, he doesn't stop. Um, and so Royal got run out of it last year, after the last. Now, the ground, I don't think, is as bad as it was last year, so he's got a chance. I still think he's, he's got a chance of winning. But if I was going to have a bet now, it'd probably be heaven help us. I mm. think... I think the mare getting the, the weight allowance, she's actually the third highest rated horse in the race, and she's, a, she's 11 to 1 on her best form with the weight she's got. She's not that far off. And she does need to improve, yes. Uh, but, you know, she's probably slightly in the wrong place in the market. Again, it was eight runners, I'd say, over an each way bet. But, but, uh, but you can't. I might have a, just a small speculative uh, punt on her. But like I said, I have back so well. Yeah, she uh, she did me a good favour at uh, Cheltenham, and uh, well, she did you a good favour after I reminded you as a she's about to jump oh, yeah, off. Of course, so. I forgot that it was you. Yeah. It was you put me on that. Yeah. It was, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. You, uh, it's you my only winner till Friday, I think. <laughs> yeah, it was, yeah. <laughs> uh, but to be fair, thirty threes, you know, it was uh, it was all right. But yeah, she's got a chance. I mean, she she's run twice poorly at Punchestown, but they've both been right-handed races, and she didn't really settle mm -hmm. into it. But uh, last year around Cheltenham and Leopardstown, I mean, it's interesting how the race is going to be run because. Obviously, she pretty much made all in the uh, the Coral Cup. Song for someone's going to be up there as well, um, and like, that that could test so royal, like you said. Yeah, exactly. That that just worries me. I mean, I think he, I, I think he's still probably got more the most class in the race, but I don't think he wants to go that far beyond two mile. And this is you know he's it's, it's approaching two mile one and a half furlongs. Just worries me a little bit. Okay, uh, Heaven Help is eleven to one shot. So Royal is a nine to four shot. Uh, I'm uh, pretty keen on. I th saw a song for someone about a week ago at seven to two, and thought, oh, I think it'll go off a lot shorter than that. And uh, Keith, here he is at nine to four. He ran to the same levels he did when winning uh, at Ascot, when second behind Buzz. And I mean, he's he's absolutely rock solid. I think he's one of those. Uh, he's not quite Grade One quality, so he doesn't quite get the credit he deserves. But I've never seen him run a bad race. Song for someone. It really runs a bad race. I'm not 100% certain about the worth of that Ascot run last time. Buzz just absolutely toyed with him, didn't he? It's, uh, and it was his first run back. And it was just it seemed like one of those ratings on it that just seemed convenient to stick on, whereas you don't actually know what those horses ran to. The horse that finished third, Guard Your Dreams, is running here off similar terms and, and has a much bigger price than him. Um, and none of the... This and the next race is that the markets I think have already righted themselves because this afternoon song for someone was was favourite and So Royal was three to one and I thought that's wrong So Royal should be favourite for this and he sort of is now. Uh, he, as Keel said, he's the best horse in the race. There is an issue with the hill a little bit getting up it, but last year in this race where he did he didn't get up the hill properly, they didn't jump the last. Whereas this year they'll have to slow down, take that last, get going again. And uh, whereas if you just keep rolling up that hill, maybe he just had a uh, having that little sort of semi breather might just help him get up the hill here because he's run plenty of decent races at Cheltenham, hasn't he? Um, and he jumped the last in front, 
in the in the fighting fifth last time. Newcastle has a, a more of a burn up the straight than Cheltenham does. It's basically uphill and into the wind all the way up the straight in Newcastle. And he, he's, he's run very close in, in a grade one there. He's the best horse in the race. All you're doing is taking the chance that he, he gets up the hill. And uh, I thought he should have been favourite to do that. He now is just about narrow late. So he's where he needs to be now. OK. Uh, we need to have a, a quick chat about a couple of others. Uh, Bally Adams, one of them. I mean, they've abandoned chasing after only only two runs. He's a funny one. I mean, he's, he's, <coughs> he's a grade one winner, Keith. But, I mean, they say there's no weak grade ones. But um, I'm, I'm inclined to disagree looking at the field that he beat. There's plenty of, plenty of weak grade ones, isn't there? And uh, he came into that race last year at the Cheltenham Festival. He had sort of uh, mid-140s, high-140s form. Didn't improve on it and getting smashed up by Appreciate and hasn't really taken the chasing. So you're asking a lot of questions of the horse. And I think were it not for the sort of feed of the, the Irish-trained horses, I don't think he'd be anything like 6-1. to one. OK, uh, there we go then. Uh, uh, the uh, the poll up there, who wins the international hurdle? 33% say so royal, 26% say song for someone, Ballyam, 20%, other 18%. It is an open race. Uh, fancies at home, so royal struggles to get up the hill almost every time, says uh, says uh, Jordan. Um, <laughs> Ellen Sheridan says, I think I might be hallucinating looking at Keith's jumper. Uh, and uh, Tom Williams says, Melrose dialing in from Lapland. So uh, not too many interested in the race, but uh, Keith, the... Um, uh, the the pattern clash at uh, your house is certainly attracting some comments. It seems that the um, the jumper is that's ten pound to save the children this because it's a it's a work initiative, yeah. and uh, this is always where I sit for studio stuff and just happens my wife put up the tree behind it. There's nothing deliberate about that. That's not for Instagram or anything. That's just there. <laughs> Yeah, you've just I was too much here. Look, I've heard you've got one of them in every room, Keith, for Instagram. So, uh... <laughs> first thing, I made the money for those energy bills. Uh, you only live in a one-bedroom flat, but um, <laughs> so, but uh, uh, we're coming over to you, David, because um, a bit of an early Christmas present for you. If there are eight runners, heaven help us each way, says Keels. Well, you've got an extra place, I think. We certainly have, Keels. This is your Christmas present from oh, us. Eleven to one, you can have three places. About the Coral Cup winner. Um, of the two towards the head of the betting, I, I love So Royal. He's one of just one of the most gamest, most consistent horse in training. But I just worry that the sort of pace that Heaven Helpers and Song for Someone might set here might just see him out up the hill. Uh, Keith's right. I mean, the market has had a bit of a swap around this afternoon. Uh, couldn't say which one's going to go a favour. Of the two, I'd probably just favour Song for Someone to repeat his victory of last year and that run behind Buzz. Albeit, I know Buzz was in a different race different class in the coral hurdle at Ascot, but he was best of the rest. So, yeah, not a great race. Shame there's no Adagio because he could potentially have been a uh, a champion hurdle contender. It's a group two, as you say, in, in name and in quality, but it's no less interesting for that. Yeah. Like I said, I, I think you're all being a bit harsh on some for someone. I think he, he never runs a bad race outside a grade one company, loves the track, defending uh, champion. And, of course, I mean, he's only, what is he? He's only six years old as well, and he seems to be running for, uh, for years. So he's still got potentially a bit of improvement to come. The thing about him was a bit about the yard as well. I mean, last season when he had all those that form, Tom Simons was having an absolutely flying time with mm. David Dennis, and now David Dennis isn't there, and he's only had one run, and it's not a really solid bit of form. So that was part of the reason I was against him. Yeah, I guess that's a that's a that's a fair point. So, uh, uh, Keith, your tip? Yep, it's so royal for me. <laughs> Probably should have said that. <laughs> Keels? Uh, yeah, well, with the three places, I'd have a couple of quid each way on Heaven Helpers. Okay, uh, song for someone for me and David. Yeah, I join you on Song for Someone. Very well. Lovely stuff. Uh, well, uh, two races to go then. Uh, Doncaster and Cheltenham to uh, to come across. Uh, a handicap chase over at Doncaster uh, next. Again, uh, if that uh, earlier race at Cheltenham is a, a proper Cheltenham handicap chase, three miles rattling around Doncaster over the fences uh, is very much a town more special. And two for gold, 15 to 8 favourite here, ahead of The Wolf at 100 to 30. Cordo Rico is 5 to 1. Fidux 13 to 2. Uh, 15 to 2. Jet uh, Mansraider is 10 to 1. Minster Muldoon is at 11 to 1 here for this uh, Doncaster contest. Uh, Keith, we'll come to you first. Uh, this is a wide open uh, race uh, won last year by Kim Bailey. He's got the favourite here, two for gold. Uh, but given that you're uh, dressed like winter is coming, Mansraider might catch your eye. But um, just a, a slight um, under the radar Game of Thrones reference there for you. Uh, oh, is it? Uh, no, right, God. I wonder what you're going with that reference. I haven't got <laughs> uh, Well, I'll tell you what, Keith, uh, ignore that and give us a winner. Uh, yeah, it was not going to be Mantrader. Mantrader just is a real steer. Probably needs even further than this is going to give him. 
Um, I didn't think this was that competitive, and it's another race in which the market has righted itself a little bit this afternoon. Cotter Rico was 8-1 to one, uh, about 2 o'clock, and he's now in at about 5s. And I think that's getting to where he needs to be. But I, I, this horse is, he hasn't won or hasn't crossed the line first since 2018. He got given uh, a, race at, a listed race at Chelsea when, uh, Kelso when definitely Red got chucked out. But um, he hasn't crossed the line first since 2018. But in all bar one races in that time, they've been graded races or listed races. And uh, in that time, he's finished second in a Peterborough flattered, admittedly, and fourth in the Paddy Flower Gold Cup last year. He's, already, he's four pounds lower than that. That was only 13 months ago. It's such an easier race than this. And, uh, and I just thought he was, at those prices, he was getting really under undervalued by the market. Five to one now, he's getting to somewhere where he needs to be. I'd still I'd still recommend backing him. I'm, I'm not a big fan of, of, of two for gold. And uh, I don't even, I don't know what that horse wants particularly. And he's not as good as some of the prices he's been sent off tell you he is. And the Wolf's making his reappearance. There's still quite a lot of things to go against those ahead of him in the betting. Cattle Rico at five is still a bet for me. Okay, Cattle Rico then at uh, at five to one, who this time last year was uh, you know running the uh, the Paddy Power Gold Cup. So a bit of a uh, a weaker uh, contest. Um, two for gold, um, left handed track though, a bold jumper. I think it's going to uh, suit him. And the the Wolf's a tough one. He's only his third. Uh, handicap start again for the Ollie Murphy at Stable. Uh, he won his chase debut last year. He's the one in here that we don't quite know. He could have a little bit more to offer, Kills. Yeah, he definitely is. Um, well, like you said, he's having loads of winners over hurdles and none over fences. I mean, surely that's going to have to change soon. It can't be anything but but a fluke that. But uh, I put up two for gold in a weekend uh, on uh, Wednesday, um, largely because there were 12 runners entered and uh, at the five-day stage, and, but nearly all of them had another possibility, and he was in one of the few that didn't. Uh, I think he's probably the right price. He goes well fresh. He you know, won first time out last uh, two seasons ago, second first time out last season. He's won a grade two at Warwick over three miles in soft ground. Um, I would have given Mance Raider a chance if he could tell me it was going to stay dry. Um, but the forecast is it for an absolutely lashed down from two o'clock onwards. And then if that's the case, you can probably add another 100 to him because he must have good ground. Um, uh, but I think, he's, I think he's reasonably well handicapped, even if he's out of... Uh, even if he's out of the handicap and he's one to keep an eye on when he gets A, a trip, and B, decent ground, um, which he may not now get until like, you know, March. Like, you know, so just something to, to look out for because yeah, we must get rain soon, mustn't we? You know? uh, but I thought two for gold was the most likely winner. I still think he is. Uh, again, it's not really, uh, not really a price I'm excited about, but I still think he's the one to beat. Okay, two for gold is fifteen to eight. Um, one we have to mention as well is uh, is Fidux at thirteen to two. Who um, he's eight years old, as is two for gold. Two for gold is having his eighteenth start of his career. Fidux is having his fifty first start yeah. of his career, which is absolutely yeah. insane. But he's won ten of those. Yeah, races. Yeah, I've backed him loads of times. Uh, uh, yeah. Even a couple of times when he actually won. Yeah, I mean, yeah. He's, he's you know he, he's been a, he's been a grand old servant, as they say. And he proved uh, his stamina uh, last time out. Yeah, he did. I'm not sure. I mean, if it gets really deep, I wouldn't be sure about yeah. it for him then. Right, you know. I mean, one's got to get home. Or I've always thought he preferred a bit of uh, decent ground as well, so he might have two things against him. So uh, I couldn't really have him. Well, I mean, if the rain really comes, we might end up with, I mean, half this field not running. It's not impossible, is it? Mm. Which would uh, which would ruin your second Christmas present of the uh, of the day, David? Because how 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 many runners do we need for those three places? This is another three places each way. Absolutely. Uh, uh, Keith's already mentioned that Corto Rico, the big market mover this afternoon. Uh, I'm going to stick with the grand old servant that you've just discussed there. Fidux doesn't lack for experience. He's been kept busy as always, but he tends to be fairly consistent. And again, with those three places each way, I'm hoping he won't be too far away from that uh, that first three. Okay. Uh, again, I'm, I'm inclined to. I keep agreeing with you, David. I don't know what's. I don't know what's. I don't know what's happening. It must be Christmas. It must be my Swedish minimalism is rubbing off on you. I think you're about to go on a bad run. <laughs> That's it. It's uh, it's just it is very hot in the studio to be yeah. fair, so uh, that explains it. But uh, uh, it's uh, it's Fiddux for David. Then I uh, I tend to agree with those three places on offer as well. Uh, Paul Keeley. Yeah, two for gold for me. Two for gold. Keith Melrose. Yeah, Cotto Rico for me. Cotto Rico then at five to one. People at uh, home. Alan Keane, Mansoor getting a nice weight here. Just a, a quick warning by the way. The 
the horse earlier on that Alan Keane said he just wins. Um, he's put that for every horse he fancies. So. Oh, is he? <laughs> oh, right, fair enough. <laughs> just be a little bit wary about that. But Mansoor Ada getting a nice weight, says uh, says Alan oh, Keane. I was trying to remember what it was so I could have my tenner on it, but now I, I, I won't even bother. Don't worry about it. <laughs> that's that's uh, skill. Three of points, isn't it? <laughs> it is, yeah. It's the 22 one showing the point to point, uh, the point, to point in, uh, recruit. Ray Stevenson says, surely if Jet is anywhere near fit, 9 to 1 uh, looks huge. So that's another one uh, involved at Doncaster as well. Penultimate race that we're going to preview uh, uh, is that race as we go over to Cheltenham, 3.35, a, uh, a mare's handicap hurdle here, two and a half miles, ten of them uh, uh, going to, uh, to post uh, for this uh, 3.35. And we've seen quite a few uh, green and gold carrying horses being very well backed uh, over the, uh, the last uh, 24 hours or so. We've got quite a few uh, tomorrow to go as well. It's not worked out fantastically well for them so far, but Trapista uh, is top of the betting at 7-2 to two with Martello Sky, also the same price. Windhouse is 5-1 to one, uh, for the inform Alan King. Indefatigable is 6-1. to one. Her indoors, 8-1. to one. Hotter than hell is a very apt uh, uh, horse right now because um, the uh, air conditioning broke several weeks ago by the feeling of in here. Uh, Runner See Me River is 14-1 to one with Midnight Reflection and it's bigger prices the rest. Really interesting race this. Um, uh, often uh, you get the same type of horses running up against each other in these kind of events, which a few of these uh, have done. Some of them even ran in this race last year. Uh, but Trapista, um, of all the J.P. McManus horses that I've seen go into handicaps, this is the only one where I thought, you know what, you've run up to a level that befits your mark. Yeah, absolutely. I, I was going to say that. We had, a, we had a couple of horses today, one non-handicapper, but in the first race, the J.P. horse, whose mm. name I can't remember, just did not deserve to be the prize it was on, yeah. on, on that form in a, in a, in a terrible race. Broomfield Berg was based, the price was based on the prices he'd been going off the time before, but he nearly won. Yeah. Like, you know, so his handicap mark wasn't far wrong, even though it looked harsh. This one doesn't look harsh, so you can you can certainly say yeah, this is this is the one that beats. She's obviously the one I fear the most. Uh, I'm a big fan of her indoors going up in trip though because I've been waiting for her to do so. Um, I think she stayed really really well on the flat. Um, uh, with every increase in distance, she got a little bit better. Uh, she was a massive eye catcher at Nottingham on her return uh, when she got stuck behind a wall of horses and then really powered down the outside to finish third uh, on soft ground. Her best piece of hurdle form was in a juvenile handicap for fillies on this uh, on this particular course last year, where she was really strong up the straight, uh, and she's going up to two mile four, two mile five now. So. Uh, it'll be back. It'll be about two mile five because again, there's extra yardage. I think it will suit her absolutely down to the ground, and I will be surprised if she's not in the first three. Okay, there you go. Strong words for her indoors uh, at uh, at eight to one uh, for uh, Alan King, who's got practically half the field here. Uh, I thought Windhouse uh, had a, a big chance as well after that win last time out. Keith Melrose, uh, last race we're going to preview. Send us out on a high, please. What caught your eye? Yeah, they're massively strong heroes, but I was with you on Windhouse. Um, I think she's going to absolutely relish this additional emphasis on stamina. It was two mile five and a bit at Wincanton when she won last time, and she needed all of it. But Wincanton's speedway track compared with Cheltenham. And uh, I just thought she was going to relish the, the extra distance. The time before that, she'd also run at Ludlow and run at the Precious Eleanor, who ran okay today behind uh, Vienna Corp. But, you know, she's a horse that is now really improving, and we can see that now for certain. And... I think she'll just improve again and go course. Okay, there you go. Windhouse then is a, a five to one shot. Yeah, I agree. That uh, that figure last time out was very uh, strong. Uh, but uh, Trapista's going to be a, a popular bet here. Uh, David going to be putting a few of those multiples uh, as ever. Yeah, no question at all. Uh, one with plenty in hand last time out, and those silks always attract plenty of support. Uh, I'd take a little chance on Runasimi River. I mean, this is a step up in class where it's going to be far more competitive than what she's been used to. But she's got a really healthy strike rate and, and looks game and looks tough enough. And at those prices, three places each way. But you mentioned Alan King there. He's got three in this race. And our final price boost of the evening is Alan King to win this race. Uh, was 15 to 8, is now out to 5 to 2. So you've got the three Alan King runners going for you at 5 to 2. Okay, lovely stuff. Uh, three Alan King runners then. And the articles had a winner at Bangor today with Major Dundee. They've got Windhouse, they've got her indoors, uh, and they've uh, got. Um, hotter than hell. They've got Hotter than hell, of course. How could I possibly forget that one? Thank you, Paul Keeley. Lovely assist. Um, your, uh, your last tip of the day is. Uh, yeah, it's her indoors. I, I think she's got a big chance going up the trip. Yeah, okay, lovely stuff. Paul Keeley then her indoors. Uh, Keith? Yeah, Windhouse for me. Windhouse. David? Runa Simi River each way. Okay, 
lovely stuff and uh, a small Dutch wind house, but I do think, like I said, Trapista uh, could have more to offer. Uh, that pretty much brings the, the show to an end then, uh, with, uh, with two minutes to spare. That never happens. Uh, so uh, we've just about got enough time uh, to look ahead to Saturday afternoon and, uh, and go for our naps of the day. Starting off uh, to my left, Paul Keeley, in form, What's the nap? Yeah, I think Bundord is an amazing price in the 115, the two mile, <laughs> the two mile handicap chase. Uh, he's run three times on the new course over two mile, and he's finished second every time, twice in this race, once in the Grand Annual, 21 pound lower than he was at the start of last uh, last season. Uh, good blowout in third to Ed Suzuki last time, beating 10 lengths, but 10 pound better off. Second start after a wind dot, outside of the field, ridiculous. Okay, great. Well, uh, in that case, uh, I better start to. Uh uh, just get me Wolverhampton notes out at this rate for tipping was we're not talking about. Uh, but Bundoran <laughs> out of the uh, the blue there, Keith. Yeah, Bundoran finishes second, eh? That's uh, it's just as he was born second. <laughs> it, I'll take my, it. My nap's not on the telly either. It's the twelve twenty at Doncaster, a comedy stop is for Venetia. Uh, it's a course that really did improve and won really well at Southall over two miles. Going to get an extra test of stamina now. The uh, you've got a skeleton horse in there, Stepney Cosway, that's making the market. And Commerce Office is just the one I'm going to. It's my nap of the day. Great, David. I thought we had to nap one we talked about. Do you do you do you fancy anything in the races we've just spent an hour going through? I've got one at Shart Inn on Sunday morning. <laughs> no, I was just looking at the prices. Bundor and his ten to one. Uh, Commerce Office is five to one. I am going to go for one we've talked about in the two hundred five at Doncaster. Take it easy. Okay, lovely stuff. Uh, and I will go for song for someone then to, uh, to win the international hurdle. I think he is a bit better than that uh, uh, average grade two field. Uh, so uh, that's it. Another edition uh, of uh, In The Know brought to an end. Thank you for watching at home. Again, if you haven't already, please like the stream uh, on YouTube and subscribe, of course, to the channel uh, if you don't already as well. Thank you to Paul Keeley. Uh, thank you to... Uh, Keith Melrose. Thank you to David Stevens uh, as well. Thank you to everyone uh, watching at home. We won't be back next week. Well, we will be back uh, for a bit of Christmas cheer on the 23rd of December. Uh, and Keith cannot change that jumper. Uh, he might not be on the show, but I'm not going to let him change it regardless. So uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, stay safe. Have a good weekend. Gamble responsibly and enjoy yourselves.